Well, it's the close of proceedings here at Shelburne Park and we've just seen the opening round of the Boyle Sports Irish Greyhound Derby, should I say, the opening session of the opening round of Boyle Sports Irish Derby heats. Ten heats in all and the undoubted stars were Sonic and Claire's Rock at 29-12 and 29-16. Two sensational runs. Kevin Hennessy, as always, joins me from Boyle Sports. Kevin, a great way to kick off proceedings. Sonic was sensational in 29-12. Claire's Rock at 29-16. I dare say if he'd been a bit earlier, the record might have gone. I think the record definitely would have gone if that was an earlier race. For me, it was a probably a 28-90 run um, on earlier going. But a great night for the Greyhound enthusiasts, great night for punters, absolute disaster for us. Um, the big three all landing for massive accumulators was Clare's Rock, Tyre Harold, and the English Raider Dorot as Wildcat. And when the three of them went in, our goose was cooked straight away. But look, it was an unbelievable night's race, and all the big guns went through. We just saw a taste of what the big, real big guns can produce, and if that doesn't whet your appetite, nothing will. Well, we'll start from the start. We'll start with the opening heat. Native Chimes, a dog that has really progressed since his puppy days last year. Of course, he was second in the ledger last year. Shelburne champion, 550 winner. He's a strong running dog. He had to overcome a little bit of early bother, but slipped around third. And once doing so, he was too strong for former Laurels winner Skywalker Manor. Yeah, Skywalker Manor ran well to the corner. Um, Native Chimes just m minded himself a little bit on the bench. You could just see him like, easing up a little bit just to make sure he held his position going into the back. And down the back, I thought he'd, he'd win convincingly. But in fairness to Skywalker Manor, really put it up to him. And just getting there on the line, Native Chimes. But look, that got punters off to a, a great start. He was heavily punted with us all week. Um, I think he could have went off a shades of odds on tonight. Uh, we tried to keep him even money and odds against, but it got punters off to a great start. But Skywalker Manor for Curly Mick, showing that he's got plenty of ability still in his tank and a very respectable 29.69. Indeed, Native Chimes, a dog that'll just keep qualifying perhaps. Um, he can go up a bit faster and he'll do faster times, no doubt, in the derby. Yeah, without question, he'll do faster times in the derby. He's, he's very, very fast. He can go at the bend well, but from the second bend home he's 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 very very good and and like you said uh, one that i think will be there qu come quarter final night we move on the second heat of the night and the aforementioned sonic 29 12 the second fastest run ever done here at sheldon park it was pretty evident from the first stride that he was going to do it yeah it was and and something we talked about massively last year here was how he we didn't think he was fluent on the bends I thought he was awesome on the bends tonight. I thought he, the, the momentum he carried off the second bend into the back straight, he never missed a, a beat. Same at the bottom two bends. If he can produce those starts and run the bends like he ran tonight, I think he's going to be a massive, massive player. It doesn't take a genius to say that after a 29-12 run, but look, he was he was away and gone. Good news, I thought, ran well. Um, and, and saying that about a dog beating 10 lengths, he got an awful lot of trouble at the first bend. He really had to, to knuckle down. And, and like he was probably 10 behind going down the back, and he kept that distance away in a, in a blistering run. So I think back file he'll be happy enough to come through that race and as long as there's no injury concerns as long as he can shake off those bumps that he got in the, at the first bend I think he'll be there thereabouts too. Indeed at this stage for good news is all about correction as you say he did take a, a couple of hefty wallops around the first two bends did run well in second but Sonic at uh, 29-12 but the feature this year, of course, he's a wide seed. And he probably is a wide seed. He does tend to step right in the first few yards nowadays. And uh, if he keeps coming away like that, though, he should be okay. He should be. I'll be interested to see to, to see his sectional um, because it wasn't a race really blessed with early pace. Budgie Marv was probably the best early pacer in the race. He missed his kick tonight. So um, if, 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 taking absolutely nothing away from Sonic, um, I think... He'll, he'll need to keep producing those starts to turn in that position when he gets in against a couple of quicker starters. But look, when he gets loose, 29-12 there tonight, what more can you say? Of course, one for Graham Holland up. I noticed he was 3-1 to one to win the derby, Graham Holland, with any one of his dogs. And he was, again, at it in the uh, third heat, Drubby's Kabai. This fellow was only third into the corner, Clona Kid and Postman Sam led him up. But he drove the bend and all of a sudden going from third to first in the matter of three or four strides and quickly put it to bed. This dog has always had savage ability. Um, I think he went about 10 races without winning a race. Um, for me, it's, it's, it's like we talked about before as well, about confidence. He gets his first win, he's now rattled off. I think that was his third win tonight. And he's had three weeks, or three wins in a matter of weeks, so in a matter of about four runs. So um, he really seems to now have his tail up and his ability has never been questioned. He's savage amount of ability. And when he leads, we know he stays all day. So um, once he led, it was always gonna just be one way traffic. And, and, and that's the way it turned out, 29.63, another good run. And uh, Graham Holland, clearly his kennel are in flying form. And this early, it's, it's, it's a real warning sign to everyone else. Good mention to listener strength, Golden second. Stayed on rightly in second, ran well. Um, could go around or two. Yeah, definitely. And even Postman Sam um, had two trials around here, some lovely farm down in Cork and, and didn't get a look and running tonight for me. Um, but I think Postman Sam, he could be a big, big price next week. And with the benefit of a race around here, I think he might, might be a run in him. 
one greyhound that certainly deserves a, a, a good mention is Tyre Harold. He was a one to three chance in heat four and he duly won as a, an odds on chance one, flew out of traps. It was sort of reminiscent of Sonic. He hit the lids, got to the front, was never in danger and very comfortable 29.46. Yeah, look, he's the Longford track record holder recently pur purchased by PJ Fatty. He's got savage early pace and um, with more runs around Shelburne, I think he'll even see quicker. Um, I think he's doing 336, 338 sections already. I'm not sure what his one is tonight. He could do 330 dead. He's got that that amount of early pace. Probably not the strongest over 550. At, at, like He won't be coming from behind in 550s, but when he's on the bunny, he's awesome. And and a very, very young dog. And uh, Damien Lonergan, actually, who works with me with Boyle Sports, he's a massive fan of this dog. He thinks this one could go all the way. Yeah, indeed, he beat Toolmaker Obama, who ran well, a dog that, if he did hit the lids in, in a, the next round or two, could upset one or two at a big price. And Ballymac Sarah Joe running on well. Of course, she was a Corn Cullen finalist last time, so no surprise to see her running on. Yeah, no, and, and Obama especially. Um, I thought Robert's dog ran really, really well tonight. Um, I was actually surprised by him because I thought Tyre Harlow going on the back would, would pull away quite convincingly, but Obama seemed to be closing on him a little bit into the third bend and home, so definitely one to be for the notebooks. Normal service resumed for Graham Holland in Heat 5. Clon Brian Hero, the Produce Stakes and Laurels champion, of course. Racing from Trap 1, it was notable he moved to the middle. We had an inkling he'd move off Trap 1, but he really moved to the middle of the track to such a point where he'd actually nearly be tempted to change the seating. Yeah, well, look, he's, he's the Produce Stakes winner. He's the Laurels winner. He's a pup who has a massive, massive career ahead of him. Um, he was a massive loser in our book as well. A, a very, very bad result in the singles there. But look, he did, yeah, look, he did move middle. The, the race was sort of set up for him with, with Cable Way not blessed with early pace in two. He, he, he did look look as though he was he was one that was going to take a lot of beating. Care Castle stayed on very, very strongly um, to pick up Cranky Mark and the dying strides to get second. But look, Clombrine Hero, a more middle draw would, would be more beneficial to him, of course. Um, maybe they're just slightly concerned that he could get five or six in, in the same breath. So, um, yeah, a, a young dog going places. Cranky Mark looked destined to take second spot, but ran out of steam in the latter stages. And Kerr Castle, a powerful galloper himself, came home strongly to grab um, him on the line. Kerr Castle, a dog that obviously had injury problems through his career, but he's plenty of ability. And another dog that just with a bit of luck could go a few rounds. Yeah, and he was running fierce well down in, in Thurles in the Tipperary Cup. Um, I thought he'd actually win the Tipperary Cup. He was favourite to win the competition in the final. Things didn't go his way, but one for Owen McKenna, who you can never rule out, who knows what it takes to win one here, winning it with like a shot, sprung a surprise there. And this dog's ability has never been in doubt. He just needs to put all the pieces of the jigsaw together. And when he does, he's very, very good. And um, yeah, another one that definitely I wouldn't put anyone off. Another word in the time there, 29.65. It was probably the worst of the, the ground at that stage. The rain hadn't come and they hadn't sprinkled the track at that stage. I, I would be surprised if that wasn't a 29.45 in the better ground. Yeah, definitely. But look, with the, the times will be, won't be that too concerning to, to the connections there. But yeah, it, it, it looked a good run and it, it'd probably be a bit quicker. But um, when we're putting up his price next week, I won't be based on 29.65, let's say. Absolutely. You got another favourite beaten in the next race, though. Droopy's Noah was beaten into second spot by none other than your father, Paul Hennessy. JT present running a bowler again swings off that final turn but he is strong he, he doesn't stop coming to the line and once he straightened up he kicked on again to hold Drubies Noah yeah another favourite beat that was the first this is the first one we, we got out of jail on this one first favourite I think, I, think, I think we were going home with, with no jackets on if this had, if Drubies Noah had a one but no fairness JT president he's he wears his heart on his sleeve he's, he's a lovely temperament and a, and a lovely dog to train and he really is as genuine as the day is long um, couple of injuries have stopped his progression um, so but look he started well and once he starts well he, he runs r tends to run well gave away a number of lengths off the last bend and you're rightly saying um, Drewby's Noah may maybe joined him there but he stayed on again strongly um, yeah no he ran very very well did president and I'm, I'm sure John and my dad will be very very happy no disrespect but I don't think the winner is coming from this heat yeah you, you'd, you, you wouldn't see the, you couldn't see the winner coming from this heat when they're a second off the pace of what the others were doing but look they're in the in the draw for the next round and I'm sure there's been plenty of derby winners that we wouldn't have picked in the first or second round too Yeah, the derby winner could come from heat 7 however a certain dog called Claire's Rocket took off once again this fellow took flight um, obviously he was a 1-4 to four favourite and he won as a 1-4 to four favourite should it was over from the start He's absolutely pinging the lids. Uh, last week here, or the night of, when he done the 29.30, it was an unbelievable run. Uh, the night of the champion stakes, he's backed it up again. If he keeps starting like that, it keep getting trap six, he's going to be very, very difficult to beat. Look, he didn't get a crack at the whip of it here last year. He was beaten in the opening round. He didn't get to contest in the second round. And we all want to see him here. I know there's, there's people looking to pick holes in him and 
they, they used to be the talk that he maybe he wasn't a competition dog. For me, during the English Derby, I know he didn't win it, but he put all his doubters wrong. Um, even the running in the final, he, he got a number of bumps. He still battled the whole way to the line, and, and that's what you need. Everyone knows when he gets on the bunny, he's near unbeatable. Everyone just says, oh, when he's behind, what can he do? In the English Derby final, for me, he, he, he proved his doubters wrong that night. He, he really, really battled in, in the final there. And look, tonight, for me, like I said to you off air, if that if that run was was when Sonic ran, I think it was a 28-90 run. I think it was it was that good. I think he would have took that much off the track record. He he was awesome. We saw an awful lot of money for the track record to go. Um, and I was talking to Frank earlier, and I said I, I, I don't see it happening. It's going to take a brave man to say it's not going to happen. But if he gets good going on a, a bit warmer conditions, he's he's he just is awesome. Like yeah, it was great to see Inky Holden running on well to grab second there for the English and. Uh, you know, they're making a sporting challenge. It's good to see him coming through. He didn't have the clearest of patches, but ran well to get second. Yeah, he did. Look, it was messy in behind. I'd say Claire's Rock was probably 15, 20 lengths in front hitting the sprint boxes. There was there was a lot of bumping on, on the inside, and it got messy. But, but uh, yeah, definitely, look, Carl Weatherall, we're, as sponsors and as ground enthusiasts, we love to see the English coming over here to take us on. Same with the Irish go over and take on English. It just adds to the atmosphere. It adds, it adds to the, the prestige of the event, and, and it just gets to see who the best dog best dog in Ireland or England go on to win the derby safe to say though if Clare's Rocket keeps getting that striped jacket he's going to be very very hard to beat yeah and if it, look if he's lucky and he stays injury free he's going, he is the one to beat he'll be I'd say he'll be no bigger than 4-1-7-2 to two come tomorrow, tomorrow morning another favourite beaten oh, in right. Heat 8 our second favourite beaten in Heat 8 here Crinkle Jake got to the front early hugs the fence um, and there was they sort of conspired to allow him to win then after that there was plenty of traffic problems uh, for the dogs in behind but one Crinkle Jake made the most of it yeah, look, five wide seeds in this race, it was it was always going to be very difficult. Calico Ranger, I have to say something about this dog. I saw him plenty in Towster. He stays all day. Even though he didn't qualify, he's the most unluckiest dog to be going home tonight. But he, he got murdered everywhere. He's a mile behind going down the back. There, he's no chance of qualifying. And yet, he finishes fifth and he was closing the whole way coming to the line. So, um, uh, you just have to feel sorry for connections there. Look, Crinkle Jake, sole inside seed for Ian Riley. And um, he made the most of a lovely draw. Very, very young dog. Only tonight's seventh race. Um, and and you, you'd be very very confident there's more to come from him as well Slippery Ru Louise running on well for second she stays all day as well but five wide seeds in one race it was always going to be messy in this all inside seed won it indeed very messy indeed as you say Calico Ranger absolutely destroyed at the opening corner and ran some race to, to get close to qualifying on so to heat nine where Dorota's Wildcat another one for the UK we know this fellow's a superstar didn't take the eyes out of her head tonight but it's only second look at the track and I've no doubt he'll come on a side for, for this evening's look yeah well I, sum, I, I think I summed it up in my tweet I thought it was a very classy performance uh, I don't think he was fluent at the boxes I don't think he was fluent at the first bend I don't think he was fluent at the third bend it is only a second look at the track I saw this dog up close and personal in Toaster and, and I said it to Kevin Hutton at the time and, I, and I've said it before if there's one greyhound that's not in, in my father's kennel I'd love to have him I'm not saying he's faster than Claire's Rocket or anything like that. I just love the way this dog runs he wears his heart on his sleeve the night he got knocked out with English Derby he broke last the running he did to get to where he got to at the second bend to nearly hit the front was unbelievable he'd burnt himself out to get to where he got to but he just has so much raw ability and raw speed he's a bundle of speed 550 will stretch him I think he'll have no problem with it I think with the six runs week with a week in between to, to recover I think he'll be perfect I was I, if I'm connections I'm over the moon with it times don't matter now he's he's a rocket to the corner he gets the 550 and trust me I think there's a lot more in the tank when it comes to him I think he'll be way better at the boxes I think he'll run the bends a lot quicker and um, yeah a, a massive player in my opinion yeah as you say because he's standing up in those couple of spots, he's not getting a chance to really get into top stride. And when he does get into top stride, he has raw speed, this dog. So we're looking forward to seeing him next week and hopefully the week after that and perhaps the week after that. On so to the final heat of the night. And this, of course, went to Drew Zarossi. And this was a, a strange contest. The whoops jack was one to three. Um, I'm sure he did help you tonight in terms of accumulators and trebles and whatnot. But uh, he walked out of traps, then edged inwards as he as is his want, found traffic problems, but once Drupi Rossi got out in behind um, the the leader, Drupi's king, he was, it was only a matter of when he picked him up and how far he went away. Yeah, look, it, it was, uh, we can get a bag of chips, uh, we can afford a bag of chips on the way home because of Wolf's jacket, but very little more. Um, yeah, he, he missed the start, he moved inwards, then we, we had the casualty at the first bend, trap three getting knocked over. It was very messy. Drupi's Rossi went up to the bend last, turns in second, game over. So, um, yeah, it was it was a real messy race. It, we got a favourite chin, but you have to say Drupi's Rossi to a 9.69, it just goes to show the ability this dog has. And how many times have we been at this stage 
and we said it look out for one that will just stay on avoid a bit of trouble stay on pick up maybe third and just keep keep qualifying cable bay has made a full has an, had a unbelievable career are doing very similar tactics and maybe droopy strassi might be the one to do it this year might not win an awful lot of rounds but we might just be one to keep keep qualifying but wolf shack i know connections will be glad to just write this round off come back next week a fresher start a better start and we know he's capable of 29 30 runs and sub 29 30 so i wouldn't be concerned but you have to feel for on a night that was unbelievable for graham holland there was just a sad end in there with, with nitro notorious having to be bowled over at the opening bend but other than that um a very very good night for all yeah great night a great way to kick off the derby again the stars were sonic and claire's rocket but we'll see more of the same hopefully on saturday night and in the coming weeks yeah look it, it really has been a great night all joking aside even even with all you want to see the punters making money tonight and and it, it just sets them up they'll all be coming back saturday they'll all be looking to reinvest fingers crossed with us in wild sports and and we'll be happy to let them but look it's it's a great night what more could we want we nearly had the track record going tonight twice and uh, like i said uh Dorota's wildcat still for me it won't be far away so with all the nice things Kevin just said, he also did give a bit of whinging like a bookmaker should at this stage of a competition. Let's hope the bookmaker is doing more whinging on Saturday night. Join us then.